So no conditioning. I, I, and I know we're repeating, you know, a lot of stuff. And a lot of you guys are already like feed the cats type people, but maybe, maybe, maybe the repetition here will help you to defend it and to explain to the kids why we're taking an off day. I coach with a guy at Franklin, Tennessee. They gave him Thursdays off. Brilliant. And there's a special board meeting to fire his ass because somebody said he was golfing on Thursday afternoon. Of course he was golfing. Do you know how, that is, how good that is for a football coach in season to golf on Thursday? He went to the board and said, everything we could do in a walkthrough on Thursday, we can do on Friday. And he goes, well, the kid's really upset. He goes, good. Maybe they'll come out and be pissed off on Friday night and kick some ass. Uh, uh, Brad always talks about uncaging his guys. The great athletes, you have to hold back. You don't have to push great athletes. You have to hold them back. You everybody understand how you're hardwiring bad shit when you're doing this? I, I love Buddy. Buddy actually holds his school record still somewhere in California in the 100 meters. Most SNC guys do not come from a speed background. They don't. Most of them come from Brad Dixon's background, right? Coach, you did hold your sprint records at your high school, though, right? No? <laughs> Shoot. No, I mean, slow people become coaches. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, you think Dolchek won any races? You know what I mean? That's an, that's an interesting question. I think, I think this is what he's talking about, is that they can't really, remember he said the coaching staff's maybe three years behind? In, in, you know, they have to baby step the coaching staff into not destroying speed. So I, th I think they're trying to counteract. And that's what you meant, yeah. I think so, I think so. But, I mean, your, your kids were faster at the end. Yeah. Garrett Mueller's kids were faster at the end of the season. I mean, like, you know, like final week of the season, 60% PRs. So I, and maybe that's high school. Uh, I was being able to do both, the s and and the football. So when I sprint a kid, and, or a, the large group, and maybe we have a week where it's like, wow, our guys are, are running slower, then that in our practice, we need to understand that. Yep. Back off. Yep. So we yep. always try to do the opposite. We back off on big game weeks, and we put the hand, like if I know my guys are going to be off in the second quarter, we, we will go harder on weeks where our team and yep. our play sucks. And most, most people ramp up. Oh, for sure. The big game weeks, and it's like, back off. Left. Back off. Yes. Yes, and, and another thing too, this is uh, one of the things I could have included last night as a lesson I learned from my dad, is, is after a loss, do fun stuff the next week. Have a contest, have gamify practice. Uh, uh, what, what is our natural idea? Dublin down. I mean, after I lost one time, my, my son Quinn's team got beat on a Friday night and uh, Labor Day was on Monday, and they had a five-hour practice. They started practice running uh, a 100-yard run for every point they gave up, 31. And one of the, this is a funny story, but one of the reasons they did this is because we were playing this new school who was literally 1 and 19, I believe, as a school, and they thought they could just kill them. And they got upset. Kind of a cautionary tale, you know. Like, you you don't want to you don't want to cause harm. Now, the other thing my dad would do, he'd do the opposite after a big win, huge win. Everybody's like, he'd kill him. The next, I mean, like, <laughs> you, know, you you think we're gonna rest on? No, I mean, so he always thought you know keep them guessing, you know. Never drift from a state of performance. I love this. I actually got this from John O'Malley, um, a, a distance coach. And you know, distance coaches, you know what they do? They, they log miles. He doesn't. They log miles like half the year. Just trying to 60, 70 a week, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and then, then they get fast 
during the racing season. He said, no way. I want my guys coming in running their fastest 5Ks on the first day of practice. That is, I mean, like nobody thinks that way in the distance world. I think that's the way we need to think. All, all these people are like, oh, we're in a hypertrophy stage, blah, blah, blah. We're not sprinting right now. Never drift from performance. Just be an athlete all the time. We don't do tempo. Tempo is when you, when you run in third, third gear but try to look like a sprinter. You know, 20 hundreds, something like that. Try and, I just, I'm just not a believer in running. I don't think I need even, yeah. I think it's important, you know, once again, there's no bounce, no snap. All the things that I believe a sprinter has to do, those are my big rocks I talked about last night. But my fifth big rock is the hardwiring effect that we, we're creating, we want to create sprint habits because sprinting is not normal. Walking and jogging is normal. This is pretty normal. So if that's the stuff you're doing in training, I'm like, why? Let's do the stuff we need to work on. Now, you may feel good after a workout like this, but it doesn't, you know. I, I just think you're putting a lot of energy into something that does not win football games. I love this picture of the way these athletes look. Are they, are they performing? <laughs> they are checked out, eyes closed. You can almost put like those thought clouds, you know, like this sucks. How many more? Oh my God. They're all backside. None are front side. They're hardwiring bad sloppy habits. Um, and they're all beautiful athletes. This team probably still wins. Understand that you know winning does not necessarily justify dumb stuff. Capacity and reserve. Everybody wants to go in every direction, but I think we need to go in the speed direction. I, I, I say that Football coaches get an A-plus for the love of speed. Everybody recruits speed. Everybody loves it. Uh, but maintaining speed, like you were talking about, you can't see it, but that, that's a C-minus. You know, most teams don't maintain it very well. And improving speed, it's missing there, but it's a C-minus. No, F, I'm sorry. They got a C-minus there and F there. But true feed the cats football teams where the S and C coach is the head coach too, like Brad is, you can get faster in season. Uh, there's a lot of guys that size, which is very impressive. But what makes him a number one draft pick? And then people people want to say, well, the forty is just such a dumb thing. If you really look at what people do in the NFL who are fast, they do things better than people who are slow. So let me teach you something about sprint capacity. It's like repeat sprint ability. And so people use this idea to we, we need to do lots of sprints because that's football. And then they miss out on getting fast. Because sprint capacity does not improve speed. We're running 40 20s does not make you faster. Well, but we need the capacity, coach. Okay, we do a capacity workout, it's kind of fun. 10 meter run in, put a cone down, two free lap cones. We run uh, 40 meters 10 times in 10 minutes. Sprint through, spiked up, walk back, sprint through, groups of 11. There's a guy running every five seconds. <laughs> Try writing down a time once every five seconds. Your guys better be in order, and there better be one guy yelling the time and one guy writing the time. It's hard. So <laughs> at the end of 10 minutes, we have 110 times written down. The ranking of the average best time from top to bottom is always totally predictable. Who is at the top of completing that workout with the fastest 10 times? the fastest guy. Who's at the bottom in that sprint capacity workout? Slowest guy. 
It's always the same. So what I say is that the faster you are, the, the better you will be able to run 40 times 20 or 10 times 40. That speed creates capacity. Who would you rather, you know, deep down we think if we get a really in great shape, the slow kid will beat the fast kid in the fourth quarter. No. No. A great story. Feed the Cats coach. Josh Lee from Muscuda. Um, he, he was you know, coach. I was a meathead. Now I'm totally feed the cats. He called me one time. Coach, you can't believe it. We upset Centralia last night. My running back, 33 carries, 317 yards. I go, holy cow, that's good. He go, I said, was he, was he gassed on the last carry? Oh, coach, he was, but he gained 17 yards on the last carry. And I said, yeah, so it's, all, it's worth it then. He goes, Coach, here's what I want to tell you. There's nothing I could have done during the week that would have made him fresh on that 33rd carry. I'm like, yeah. It's kind of like the 400 meters. There's nothing I could do. I could work a kid so hard, and it still sucks at the end of the 400. Now, distance guys say, oh, that, that was an easy 4 Well, yeah, you ran it in 73 seconds. <laughs> Shut up. Sprint it next time and see if it's easy. So no, I, I think trying to make the fourth quarter easy is something that Feed the Cats coaches just give up. No, they said fourth quarter is going to be hard. But there's magic in a game. Another thing he said was that, you know, Coach, this is our third game. And I was thinking he got 12 hours of sleep more than he got last year. Because cause we don't, we're not bringing him in at 7 o'clock anymore on Saturday mornings. He's getting an extra four hours of sleep on Saturday mornings. Twelve extra hours. Love it. Is this speed training or capacity training? Capacity. And Connor made the mistake of saying that they're uh, working on speed. And so I trolled him a little bit. You know, nice. You know, like, no, it's not speed training. Now, is there value to this? Sure, let's just, let's not, let's not say, yeah, if you say, yeah, we work on speed three times a week and do this, that, that's, you're not hitting, I mean, this doesn't look like those TCU guys doing those ins and outs and stuff. A lot of people want to plant beans to grow corn. They want to push heavy things and pull heavy things. And, and there's a place for it. I love it. But that's not speed training. Speed training is when we spike up in time. I mentioned the end of the 400. Every single guy that Marcellus is beating here has worked at least three times harder. At least three times the volume. I guarantee. Because every track team in America works harder than we do. And I tell my team that. Every track team in America is going to outwork us. And they kind of look at each other like, Coach, is that a good idea? I was like, should, maybe we should work? No. Nope. We're still going to beat 98% of them. Because we're going to be fat. Okay, all right. That's the idea. <laughs>